Do not miss any of our cool videos. Subscribe to our channel for latest updates. Click on the bell icon now. Analog inputs and outputs on the Pico using the potentiometer and PWM? Well, let's get into it. Hi, and welcome to Robocrace. My name is Shiv, and in this video, I'll be teaching you how to read values from a potentiometer on the Pico and control the brightness of an LED by using PWM. So basically analog inputs and analog outputs. This video is the third in a series where I am teaching you how to program the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller using MicroPython. So make sure you check out the other two videos before watching this one. I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description down below and in the cards above over here. So let's get started. So let us begin by connecting a potentiometer to the Pico. So I have three jumper wires over here. I'll connect the red wire to one end of the potentiometer the grayish brown wire to the other end and the orange wire to the middle pin of the potentiometer like so. So this is what it should look like. Now the other end, the red wire will go to VCC which is fifth from the left on the top over here. So this is VCC. This wire will go to ground which is third from the left on the top and the last one, the orange wire, will go to the ADC0 channel. So that's another five pins to the right of the red wire. So this is what it should look like. Let us now get into our Thony editor and try to read values of the potentiometer. So we begin by importing from the machine module pin and ADC. We'll declare our ADC pin as ADC pin 26. GPIO 26 is connected to ADC channel 0. So we declare it as ADC pin 26. We'll have our infinite while loop over here. <clears throat> where let us just print the value of ADC dot read underscore U16. So read underscore U16 reads a 16 bit unsigned integer from the ADC. And then we'll go ahead and print it. To control the speed at which it prints, let us also import the time module and call time.sleep and let's give it one second. I'll go ahead and run it and as you can see, we have the readings coming here at the bottom. I'll now take a screwdriver and turn the potentiometer since it's a little bit hard to reach between all the wires. As I move the potentiometer to the right, you can see that the values are slowly decreasing. all the way down to a minimum and in the opposite direction all the way back up to maximum. And there we have it. We are now reading values from the ADC. Let us, night, uh, let us now try controlling the brightness of an LED by using PWM. So I'll take my LED over here and as usual, we'll connect it to pin number 15. So the rightmost pin on the bottom over here and the current limiting resistor. These connections are the same as we make in our previous videos. So you can go and check them out once. So there I have it, my current limiting resistor and the LED. I now need to import PWM and let us declare PWM as a PWM object attached to pin number 15. I'll remove this from here and I'll just add a for loop for now. For i in range 65025, the maximum value for PWM in, in the Pico as per the documentation is 65025. Even though the PWM uh, channels take a value of 16 bit unsigned integer, but as per the documentations, 65025 is the maximum value. So we can do PWM dot duty underscore 16 and pass it I. We control the delay by using time dot sleep. Let's make it 0 0.1. And over here, we also have to do PWM dot frequency 1000. So this will set the frequency of the timer 
to 1 kilohertz. You can now go ahead and run this. I'll reduce this delay a little bit actually. Let's go ahead and run this. Duty underscore U16. Small type over here. The function is duty underscore U16. So I run it now. And as you can see, slowly the brightness is going up. It will reach a maximum value and then go back down to zero. We can speed this up a little bit by reducing the amount of delay over here. Let me just do that. And there we have it. The LED brightness increases. And then after reaching a maximum value, it will go back down to zero. So we can now use the potentiometer to read values and based on those values we can control the brightness of the LED. So let's try that now. So to control the brightness of the LED, in my while true loop over here I'll simply do pwm.duty underscore u16 and directly pass it whatever we read from the ADC. So adc.read u16 will return whatever value we read from the ADC and it is passed directly to the pwm duty cycle function. So we read from the ADC and immediately write it to the PWM channel and then to control the speed a bit we'll just do time.sleep 0.001 just so that it does not read from the ADC too fast or try to write the PWM too frequently because we anyways don't need it to happen that quickly. So a delay of 0.001 seconds should be sufficient. I'll go ahead and press the play button and as you can see the LED is on at some brightness. I'll just increase the potentiometer a little bit and you can see the brightness go up. And conversely, if I reduce the value of the potentiometer, as in turn it to the right, it reduces the brightness of the LED. And this is a basic direct control of the brightness based on the potentiometer. Since we are on the application of ADCs right now, I'll show you another cool application where we can use this. So I have over here a flex sensor. This is a variable resistance type sensor in the sense that when I bend it in either direction, it resistance changes. So we can use this in a voltage divider configuration that I have on the screen over here right now. So V in is our input voltage. Z1 and Z2 are two resistances and between them we tap the point to draw V out. So we're going to use this as one of the resistances and I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor over here with me which I'll be adding in series with this as shown in the diagram to get a voltage divider and then on the center point between both of them we will tap it and take the voltage. So let's build the circuit. I'll plug this in to my breadboard over here. Any empty pin on the breadboard will do. And once that's securely placed on the breadboard, I'll go ahead and connect the resistor to one of the ends of the, of the flex sensor. And then we'll add a VCC and ground. So there, you can see one pin of the flex sensor and the other pin of the flex sensor is connected to the resistor. Now I'll connect ground to the free end of the flex sensor, this brown is our ground wire over here and the red one which is our 3.3 volt VCC, I'll connect it to the free end of the resistor. So there, I've connected the ground on one end, the other end of the flex sensor is connected to one end of the resistor and the free end of the resistor goes into VCC. Now the middle point over here where both the resistor and the flex sensor are connected to one another. I'll place the orange wire which is our ADC signal. This is the V out as shown in the circuit diagram over here. So let us go ahead and write a simple script that simply prints the value read by the ADC onto the, onto the terminal. So I'll jump into my Thony editor over here and as you can see I have a very basic script over here. All it does is declares the ADC pin and prints the value that it reads from ADC and there is a delay of 0.1 seconds. Let me go ahead and run this and let's see what kind of output we get. So as you can see in the shell below, it's just spitting out a lot of numbers. 
let me see if I bend it. Can we notice a change in the values? So it's touching 62 now, occasionally 63, and I was going all the way up to 64, 65. Now this is not a very intuitive way of uh, looking at readings from a sensor. So over here I'll show you one very neat trick that we can use. So as you know we have the USB cable over here and all of this data that you see coming on the shell over here is coming through the UART interface. Now what this means is since we are uh, we're just uh, printing out numbers on the UART interface I can actually go ahead and close the Thony editor because I want to release the COM port from the shell and I have my Arduino over here. Now what I can do is I'll go to tools and select my COM which is COM25 and now if I open the serial monitor you can see the same readings are coming over here but now what I'm going to do is go to tools and serial plotter now you can see that the values returned by the sensor are being plotted on this graph now this might make it a little bit easier to visualize these values and I'll show you now so I'll bend the sensor in one direction and you can see the readings fall and now I'll bend it in the opposite direction you can see the readings go up. I keep bending in one direction, the other one. You can see how the readings are being plotted out over here. So this is a much more intuitive way of looking at readings uh, being spit out on the serial terminal. And this makes it uh, much more clearer to observe the variation in the voltage caused by the variation in the resistance on the voltage divider. So this is our flex sensor which is the Z1 in us, which is the Z2 actually in our circuit because this is directly connected to the ground. Now if you look at a circuit over here, Z2 is connected to ground, Z1 is connected to VCC. So my 1 kilo ohm resistor is connected to VCC, this is Z1, this is Z2 and variation in this Z2 is causing variation in the V out because the amount of voltage that is dropping across Z2 changes as the resistance of Z2 changes. So I'll go back to the serial plotter now and I'll just play around with this a little bit and you can see how this affects the readings. And that was it guys, ADC and PWM on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's all for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something today. If you did, do leave us a like and comment down below with any queries, suggestions or ideas that you may want to share with us. Don't forget to subscribe because in the next video, I'll be teaching you how to use an OLED display with the Pico. So stay tuned for that one. In the meanwhile, keep learning, keep programming and I'll see you in the next one.